What's up everybody, this is CryptoCheck here. Welcome back to another episode. Today I'm going to be teaching you all about how to use Binance as an absolute beginner to the platform. We're going to go over what Binance is, how to actually get your Bitcoin or other crypto into Binance, what are the fees with trading with Binance, and how to perform all sorts of different order types such as market orders, limit orders, stop loss orders, and OCO or one cancels the other orders. So let's dive right into it. So what is Binance? Binance is the world's leading cryptocurrency exchange. Now what does this mean? It's basically a platform where you can trade or buy and sell different cryptocurrencies such as Bitcoin, Ethereum, etc. This is the absolute best platform to trade. They have tons of different options of things you can buy and sell. There's a lot of liquidity in the platform, which means that you can always buy and sell as much as you'd want to. The support team is really good and helpful. And the fees are pretty low for trading. Even furthermore, if you use their coin and store a couple of them in your wallet, the fees are reduced by 50%. I'll get more into this just a little bit later. In order to actually get going with Binance, you're going to want to go to Binance.com. I'll put a link for this in the description below. It, just a heads up, the link is a referral link. If you wouldn't mind using that and supporting the channel, that would be awesome. So once you open up Binance.com, you're going to get into a screen where you're going to have to create an account. You're going to go through that login and then you're going to see exactly what I'm seeing here. Now Binance has a desktop application, a mobile application, as well as just their normal website. I personally use their desktop application when I'm doing my trading. It runs a lot faster, it looks smoother, it looks cleaner, it has a dark mode attached to it, and it has all of the same functionality as the desktop website. So today I'm going to show you how to use the desktop application. In order to actually get that, all you're going to want to do is scroll down once you're on the home page here and you've logged into your account and there's this desktop section. Download this for your respective platform, pause the video, and play it again once you have that. Okay, so now you have the desktop platform, you're logged into Binance on it, and you see exactly what I see. This screen with a whole bunch of different things on it. It can be overwhelming when you first open it. All you can see is tons of different markets, their prices, uh, their changes, their they're over 24 hours, the percentages, the 24 hour high, low, and volume. Now you can start playing around with this information later on, and if you want to get a glance at the markets on an overview, it's a really good place to do so. For example, just clicking on BTC markets, you can see all the different pairs for BTC. If you want to see the one that's changed the most over the last 24 hours, simply click the change percentage button twice and you'll get the most positive gains. For example, Nulls BTC has gained 43.48% over the last 24 hours. One of the most important fields I look at when opening Binance is volume. So this 24 hour volume. Once we sort by that, we get a much better picture of which coins actually have a bunch of volume and we're gonna be able to trade them with as much as we would like to. Now, if you're just buying a small amount of something for the long term, it doesn't really matter too much what the volume is like, but once you're actually day trading these coins, you're gonna wanna stick to the higher volume pairs, especially as your portfolio grows. Now, this is great and all, but how do you actually get crypto into Binance in order to actually trade it? So the first step here is you're gonna need to own the cryptocurrency. My favorite platform to do this is Coinbase. If you wanna see exactly how to get cryptocurrency set up with Coinbase, let me know in the comments and I'll create another video in order to use Coinbase and get you set up with that. For now, let's base off the fact that you have Bitcoin in Coinbase already. So what you're going to want to do is go back to the Binance.com website. You can also do this on the desktop app, but I find the website to be a little bit better for deposits. Go on over to the wallet on the top right. Click on Spot Wallet. This is where you deposit and withdraw your cryptocurrency. And once this opens up, you can click on deposit on the left hand side. And you'll go over to this right hand side here. Select your network, with this, which is BTC. Look at your address, and you can simply copy the address. Now what you're going to want to go do is paste that address into the Coinbase website. So clicking over to Coinbase here, you're going to go ahead and click withdraw. You're going to search for the asset you want to withdraw, and I don't have anything in Coinbase, but we can pretend that I do for now, and I'll go through all the steps that I would normally take. 
click on Bitcoin. That's the one you want to withdraw. And you're going to click on crypto address. You're sending it to Binance, which is another crypto address. And you're going to enter the Bitcoin address you just copied. Now I have mine saved here so that I can always refer to it back in the future, but you won't see this come up until you save it the first time. So once again, go back here, copy address, paste it into here. Double check that you have all of the characters copy pasted correctly. I've never seen this copy paste fail, but you want to make sure that you are exact with how you copy this over. After all, this is cryptocurrency. There's no middleman. So if you type in the wrong address here and it goes to the wrong person, it's going to be lost forever. Don't make that mistake. I like to look at the first few characters and the first last characters and confirm that they are the same. So 1KH, I go back here, 1KH, pasting it again as it got lost, DDGI, DDGI. That all looks good. So click on use this address. It's gonna tell you that it's a valid Bitcoin address, which is great, even though we just double checked as well. That's always good to see. Now you're gonna click on the amount you wanna transfer. If you wanna send all of it from Coinbase to Binance, you'll click max. If you wanna send a certain amount, you'll type it in here and you'll go ahead and click withdraw. Now you'll see here that there's a processing time of three confirmations. This has to do with how the blockchain actually processes your transaction. If you wanna learn more about this, let me know and I can teach you about it in a future video. For now, all you need to know is that this could take anywhere from about 10 to upwards of about 30 minutes. So if you don't see your money transfer over right away, that's totally okay. It's going to be that way. Just be patient with it and it will show up. Go ahead and click withdraw. Now you'll come back here and you'll see a new deposit that will come in with this transaction. It'll be listed here. My most recent deposit is a TRX or Tron deposit. So now that we have our crypto in Binance, what are the fees for actually trading it? Let's go on over to the fee schedule of Binance. Now these fees vary based on how much you trade. If you trade less than 50 Bitcoin a month in value, which at this point in time is about $350,000, give or take, then you're going to be in this VIP zero category. What that means is that your maker and taker fee are 0.1%. However, if you decide to use Binance to cover your fees, they go down to 0.075%. Now, what does it mean to use BNB with your fees and get this 25% off? Well, basically, Binance has a coin called the Binance coin and its ticker symbol is BNB. If you hold some of this in your portfolio, when you make a trade, the BNB will be used as a fee instead of using whatever coin you're trading for. So for example, if you're trading Bitcoin to the US dollar or you're trying to sell Bitcoin, it's going to cost you a Bitcoin fee. They're going to take some of that Bitcoin right away before you sell it. However, if you have BNB in your portfolio, it's actually going to use the BNB as the fee and it'll charge you 25% less fee. I would highly recommend you do this if you're going to be trading a significant amount. You can always just store, you know, a couple BNB. They're only about $13 each right now. So, so put maybe one or two in your portfolio, depending on how much you're trading. And this will help you out a ton over the long run. Next, let's actually go back into the desktop platform and teach you about all of the different order types you can do. In order to do this, we're going to go over to the exchange tab on the left. Once you click on this, you're going to get a window here and it's going to tell you what types of pairs you're looking at. I just have the BTC pairs highlighted. And since I have some TRX in my portfolio, I'm going to type that in and click on this pair. That'll help me be able to teach you a little bit easier. Now, once you open this up, you're going to get a chart of TRX. I like to look at this, at least with the 15 minute candles. I find that time chart to be a little bit hard to read. This gives me a slightly better picture, though I do all of my technical analysis on TradingView. If you want to learn more about TradingView, click on the card in the top right right now. I'll also put a link to TradingView in the description below. So back into the order types. In the bottom middle here, you can see buy and sell. It's going to show you how much Bitcoin you have in your portfolio since we're trading TRX to the BTC. And if you click sell, it's going to tell you how much TRX is in your portfolio. 
So this would allow us to sell TRX. This would allow us to buy TRX with BTC. Here's the different order types you can do. Limit, market, stop limit, and OCO. Market's the simplest to explain, so we'll go ahead and start there. What this is going to do is put an order through right now, whatever price it can get, the best price for you, it'll just do that. So let's say you wanted to buy 10 TRX right now. You would just type in 10, you click buy, and it would execute. If you want to know what price that's going to be, you can look over on this right hand side here. Those green ones are the buy orders that people have set up. They are the limit orders, which I'll get into next. And these are the sell ones, the sell limit orders. So if you're going to buy this right now, the lowest price that someone's selling at is this 177 limit order. So if I were to put this order through for 10 TRX, I would buy at this 177 price. On the other hand, if I were to go over to sell and try to sell 10 TRX, it would sell at the highest price that someone had a limit buy order for, or 176. If you just want to get your cryptocurrency quick, you know exactly what you want, you don't care too much about the small price changes, and you're not buying too much of it, then market orders are great for you. On the other hand, if you're looking to trade, and you know exactly what price you want to buy at, limit orders are what you're going to want. Now, as I was saying before, these are all limit orders. We could do the same thing and set up our own limit order simply by clicking on one of these prices on this column here or typing in our own. For example, let's say I want to set up an order to buy TRX at 164. I'll click buy here, I'll click on 164, and let's say I want to use 25% of my Bitcoin to buy TRX at that price. I would go ahead and click on this bubble, 25%, it would fill that in automatically for me. And now we have a limit order ready to click buy. If I place this, it'll show up right here under 164. You'll see this number increase as well as the total BTC in this column right here. And once the price gets down to there, once someone else does a market sell, if 164 is the best price that they can sell at, AKA the highest price that someone's buying at, 176 right now, but if we were to get to 164, it would then fill our order and we would get the TRX that we want. On the exact same side, sell would be exactly the same way. We would click a price in the red that we want to sell at. Let's say we wanted to sell a third of our TRX. We can simply just click here until we get to 33% roughly. Click on 189 and we could click sell and set up this so that if the price were to get all the way up there and someone tried to buy TRX at 189, ours would sell to them. Now earlier I was discussing on this page the maker and taker fee. What this basically means is that when you're setting up a limit order, you're the maker of the trade. You're setting a price so that when it gets there, someone else can fill that price. However, if you're doing a market order, you're the taker of the trade. Someone else has already set up a price. For example, someone's already buying at 176. So if we were to sell, we'd be the maker of the trade. Now on Binance, the fees are exactly the same for maker and taker. So it's not too important to know the difference. Other platforms might have differences in these percentages. And as you move down the VIP levels, you can see that the maker fee does end up dropping significantly more than the taker fee. This is because Binance wants to encourage people to actually set up the trades to cause the market to have liquidity. There are a few other small things you can do with limit orders. For example, post only. What this means is if you were to try and post a buy order at 177, because this would immediately go through, as in you're trying to buy, but someone's already trying to sell at that price, this would not allow it to happen. You might do this if you're trying to only have the taker fees at a significantly higher VIP level and you wouldn't want your order to go through if it were to cause a maker fee. The next thing you can do is set a time and force. So the, there are three different options for this. You can set it good till canceled, which means the order is valid until you manually cancel it. Fill or kill. If the order is not executed in fully in short time, the order will be canceled. And finally, IOC, or immediately or cancel. The part of the order that is not executed immediately will be canceled. The last thing you can do is set iceberg orders. 
Now what this is going to allow you to do is actually set kind of a hidden order. So even though it looks like all orders are in this book on the right hand side here, there could actually be 10 more Bitcoin of orders that are not showing up here because they're set as iceberg orders. This is kind of an advanced strategy and I won't go too much further into it. Now once you've either used a market or limit order to make the trade that you want, go ahead and set a stop limit on this trade. What this is going to do is if the price actually drops to a certain level that you set, it'll execute another limit order for you. For example, let's say we just bought at 176, but if the price goes down to 171, we really want to get out of this. We've done our technical analysis, we figured out that this price level is dangerous and if it goes there we think it's going to go much lower, so we just want to sell. What you're going to want to do is type in 171 as your stop. That is the condition. If the price reaches 171, our condition is met and we're going to go ahead and create a limit order automatically. So now we need to set what the limit order would be. If the price hits 171, it might be falling quickly. If we try to set a limit order of 171, it might not actually sell if no one tries to buy at 171 after. So you're going to want to think about exactly where this price might fall in a quick period of time. For something like TRX, because it's such a low number already, it's only 171, falling to 170 is a pretty significant drop right away. And you can see that there's about three Bitcoin of volume at each level. So it's pretty safe here to use 170 as your limit order. And we're gonna make sure that if it hits this price level, we'll immediately sell half of our TRX. So just to recap once again, this is our condition. If it hits 171, our condition is met. It creates the limit for an order for us. We're setting a limit sell order at 170. It should fill right away because people are still buying at 171, even if the price touches 171. So most likely we're gonna get a fill at 171, just in case the rest would fill at 170. You can use the same time and force options here as you would with the limit order. Last but not least, the OCO order, which is a bit more complex than the other ones and kind of combines a limit and stop limit order all in one. Let's say you've entered a trade via market or limit order, and now you want to set up conditions. You either want to sell when it gets to a certain price. For example, let's say we bought TRX at 176 here. If it goes up to 185, we want to make sure that we sell. However, if it goes down to 170, we're scared. We want to get out of the trade and take our loss. This is exactly what an OCO order can do for you. You can set a sell target and a stop limit. This top part here is the first part of that, the sell target. So if the price goes to 185, this is going to be our sell. However, if the price goes down to 171, like we were using before with our stop limit, we want to set a limit order for 170. These are two separate things. So this is condition one, and this is condition two. Whichever one happens first, we'll execute and it'll cancel the other. Hence, OCO, or one cancels the other. You would go ahead and choose the amount of TRX you wanted, let's say all of it for us, and you would just click the sell button here. Now you can do exactly the same thing on the buy side if you wanted to. The concept is exactly the same. The price numbers would be reversed because you're trying to buy once it gets to a certain lower level and then sell if it gets to a higher level. So what type of order is going to work best for you? Do you plan to just use market orders and buy some cryptocurrency one time and hold on to it? Or are you going to go more with the limit order path and maybe use stop limits or OCO orders once you're actually into trades? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please hit the like and subscribe buttons if you enjoyed this and want to see more similar content.